No other Jewish community in Nazi-occupied Europe was so comprehensively destroyed than that in the Lithuanian capital of Vilnius, where tens of thousands of residents disappeared between 1941 and 43. But the artists who lived under Nazi rule in a Vilnius ghetto refused to relinquish all hope and continued to express their beliefs through poetry and music. Decades on, the collection of songs they composed gives an incredible insight into the Jewish experience of the Holocaust. Stories now pieced together by an Australian filmmaker, Kirsten Murray reports. It was like an antidote to the tragic times. We didn't think of all the tragedies. We only listened to the songs that gave us strength, really great strength. They were forced to live in horrific conditions where food was scarce, disease common and death almost certain. Yet in the face of utter darkness, those held captive in this Nazi-controlled ghetto managed to hold on to their culture to create something of extraordinary beauty. Those writers and actors who, who were in ghetto they felt that they can do something and contribute something to improve their life in ghetto. The town of Vilna, now known as the Lithuanian capital Vilnius, was once a cradle of culture, a place where some of Eastern Europe's most revered poets and musicians lived. Despite being treated like prisoners during the Holocaust, they held on to their creative freedom. I was just immediately fascinated I thought, you know, well, how did this music survive? What is this music about? What does it tell us about the Holocaust? How many of these people that created this work are still around today? The songs they sang is the story of the music and the lives of the Vilna Ghetto, a documentary which took Australian filmmaker Rowan Spong around the world to piece together what remained. There was something about this music that spoke to its listeners in a way that facts and figures can't. It tells us about the emotional journey of the people that experienced the Holocaust. And it's this interval that suggests the sorrow. But then occasionally you get into, you take off and, and, you, and, and the music becomes this dancing and jumping and frantically looking for happiness and the music catches it. But it was a challenging project. Many Jews from the ghetto hadn't survived. Some who had simply wanted to forget. It was part of something that happened that I don't want to remember and I have almost a complete loss of memory when it comes to that uh, part. But there were others whose memory hadn't faded. The songs I remember very well. Australian immigrant Deborah Zubin was a teenager at the time and recalls going to see one of the concerts staged to buoy people's spirits. We believe that it is something what we should remember. We shouldn't give in to the tragedies. We should repeat the songs. We should believe that the better times will come. A number of the people who composed and created this music had escaped. There was a poet called Avram Sutskeva who wrote you know, a seminal work from this period called Unter Deiner Weiser Stern, Under Your White Stars, and it's a song about questioning God. And he is, or was 96, and was living in Israel. Rowan Spong was on his way to meet the poet in the Middle East to ask how music was made under such harsh conditions. But tragically, he died the night before the filmmaker arrived. After the funeral, relatives discovered a missing piece of the puzzle within the poet's diary. They found this piano. They had to bring it to the ghetto, dismantle it, and every person took a part of the piano. And they found in the ghetto this expert that had put it together again. I think that 
to have made art in the face of death is possibly the bravest and most courageous act of creating art. Musicians risked their lives to smuggle the most rudimentary song sheets out of the ghetto, but what remains today is sketchy. OK, this is what I had to work from, just a photocopy of the tune and chords. So this is the original tune on its own. Melbourne-based composer Joseph Giofanazzo worked on putting some of the music back together. The song's called uh, Stiller Stiller, which means quiet, quiet, and what I wanted to do was create a stronger impression of something that was quiet and of someone who was trying to calm a child down. So I slowed it down and altered the, the rhythm to create a lilting, bending over quality to it. For those involved in filming the documentary, keeping the legacy of the Vilna ghetto alive has been vital. A lot of people have been waiting for this story to be told on this scale and connecting all of these people all around the world um, in the way that it has been. Stiller, stiller, lo mir schweigen, quorim wachsen do. It is an epic tale and was a big task for a non-Jewish man from Melbourne to take on. If you don't create something because you are daunted by the prospect of creating it, then you've effectively let these people disappear into oblivion, and I think that's a worse outcome. I never, never thought that there would be some people who will pick up this little incident that they will consider it important. I believe in miracles. That's one more miracle. Kirsten Murray with that report and that's the program for tonight.